Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about the different data types in C++. And what data type basically just means a type of data or a type of information that we can use and work with inside of our C++ programs. So there's all different types of uh, information. We can store like text, different types of numbers, decimal numbers, true, false values, all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to kind of walk you guys through what all of those are and how we can use them. So uh, the easiest way for me to demonstrate this is just going to be to create a bunch of different variables. So any of the different types of data that we can work with in C++, we can actually store inside of variables. So uh, I'm just going to create a couple different variables and I'll kind of show you guys exactly how this is going to work. So the first data type I want to talk to you guys about is called a character. And a character basically allows us to represent one single character. So the way we can create a character variable is just by saying char. And now I want to give this a name. So let's just call it like grade or something. And whenever we create a character, we're going to use these single quotation marks. So I can store any like regular character that I would want inside of here. So, you know, essentially any character that you can think of, you could store in here. And then we're going to include this semicolon. So that's basically like the character uh, data type. And in addition to just storing one single character, there's going to be a lot of situations where we're going to want to store like more than one. And what we can actually do is use something called a string. And a string is basically just a string of characters. So it's instead of just being one single character, it's like a bunch of different characters. So this would be like essentially just plain text that we would see in a program. So I could just say string and we could just call this like phrase. And when I create a string, I can use these um, double quotation marks. So I could say like draft academy or something. And now we're going to be able to store instead of just one character, a bunch of different characters. So there's different situations where you might want to use either like a char or a string. But for the most part, I, I think strings are probably a little bit more commonly used than chars. So instead of just plain text, we can also store and work with numbers. So essentially, there's two different types of numbers, or two basic types of numbers, there's whole numbers, and then there's decimal numbers. Some people will also call those floating point numbers. A whole number is like a counting number. So think like one, two, three, four, five, right? They're just whole numbers, solid numbers, there's no decimal points, right? Then we have decimal numbers. So it'd be like 0 0.5 or 1.267 or 10.11. You know, basically a number that has a decimal point after it. When we work with these different numbers, C++ is actually going to distinguish between them. So the first type of number we can work with is an integer. So I could just say int and this could be like an age or something. So whenever we're creating a number, we can just type out the number. So I could say like 50 and you'll notice I don't need any quotation marks. I don't need anything special surrounding this. I can just type out the number. In addition to positive numbers, you can also use negative numbers. But anytime we're using an integer, you can't have a decimal point. So you can't do anything with decimals. These are just going to be solid whole numbers. If you want to work with a decimal, you have two basic options. So there's two data types that represent decimals in our programs. The first is called float. And this basically just stands for like floating point number. The second one is called double. Now you'll hear different people talk about these different uh, data types. The main difference is just how many decimal points they can store. So a double can store more decimal points than a float. So if you need a number to be very specific as far as like how many decimal points you can take it to, then you definitely want to use a double. And I would say for the most part as a beginner, just only worry about doubles. Um, floats will be used more in specific circumstances, but you know, as you're just learning this language, really just worry about doubles. So we could just say double like GPA, and I could set this equal to like 4.5 or like 2.3. Basically, I could make this any decimal number that I wanted. Keep in mind, you could also do like 2.0, so it doesn't have to be um, like a different number decimal. And again, you can make these negative. That's no problem. So ints are going to be what we're going to use for whole numbers. For the most part, doubles are going to be what we're going to use for decimal numbers. So that covers text and numbers. And just with those two data types, with text, we can use characters and strings and then ints and doubles. You can represent like just about any type of information in your programs. But C++ is awesome. So they're actually going to give us another data type, which is called a Boolean. 
And a Boolean is maybe not as intuitive as uh, like text and numbers. A Boolean is actually what we would call a true false value. So when we're writing our programs, there's actually gonna be a lot of situations and circumstances where we wanna represent true or false data. And a Boolean is just a special word for true or false, right? So I could say B-O-O-L, that stands for Boolean, and we could create a variable like is male, right? So this variable is male is gonna store a true or a false value inside of it. And this will basically tell us whether or not someone is male. So in my case, I could say true because I am a male, right? So you'll see how this can kind of come in handy for different things. Like uh, we could say something is true or we could say something is false and that allows us to represent a certain type of information. I could also say false over here and that's gonna be the opposite. So these are gonna come in handy a lot, these true false values and we can use Booleans to represent them. So for the most part, these are the basic data types. Now there's a couple other data types that we could also get into, but I think 99% of the time as a beginner, as somebody who's learning C++, you know, don't concern yourself with anything that you don't have to. So Booleans, doubles, which are just uh, decimal numbers, ints, which are whole numbers, strings, which is plain text, and chars, which are just single characters, that's what we're going to be working with. So as we go forward in the course, we're going to be working with all this different type of information. Now, I want to point out one more thing. So I'm actually just going to make a little um, print statement here. And, you know, this is a basic statement. So if I wanted to, I could print out any one of these variables. Like if I could print out grade, for example, and this is going to go ahead and print that out onto the screen. You see over here, we're just printing out A. But we don't have to store this information inside a variable. So if I wanted, I could just type in a string down here, right? I don't have to store it in a variable, and this is what we would call a constant. So I don't need to store it inside of a variable. I could also, you know, type out like false, or I could type out a number like 4.5, or I could type out an integer, or I could type out a character. Like you don't have to put these things inside of variables. A lot of times you can just use them um, like straight up like that. And this is what we would call a constant. But um, a lot of times you're gonna wanna store information in variables because it's really useful. And obviously when you do that, you have to declare the data type and you have to tell C++ what type of data you wanna work with. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.